Praise the Lord, what a blessing it is, again, to have this opportunity to share uh, with each of you in another Monday Manna class. I give God praise for who you are to me. I give God praise for who you are to the kingdom. And I give God praise for who you are to your local church, your local assembly. I thank God for this opportunity that he gives me every uh, Monday to share the word of the Lord with you. Just a 30-minute Bible study, defending our faith, standing up for our faith, explaining our faith. Um, last year, we went through the entire book of Galatians. Um, and then this year, uh, we are going through the entire book of Colossians. Um, so if there's something perhaps you don't understand about a particular passage in Galatians, um, go to the Mill Branch Missionary Baptist uh, Church page. Go to the Rivers of Life page. There you can find each week's Monday Manna, us going through the scriptures verse by verse to really understand what it is that um, God is saying to us. Um, and so I would encourage you to do that. Um, tonight we are in Colossians chapter number three. Uh, and we're going to deal with verses 15 and 16. It is my prayer. It is my prayer to finish the book of Colossians by December 31st. Uh, and so I'm going to do my very best to do that. Uh, I pray that you will join me in that. Um, and, and, and we got two months to do it. Amen. So with that being said, let's jump right into the word of the Lord because there's a lot I want to share with you tonight. Uh, and I'm going to do my very best to get it all out in these first in these two verses. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Just a reminder of why we do Monday Manna. Um, it comes from Exodus chapter 16, verses 4 and 5. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate uh, every day that I may prove them, whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass, and on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. God sent the children of Israel bread from heaven uh, to feed their physical bodies, but now God has given us another bread. Um, and that is his word to feed our spiritual souls. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So let's jump right in. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now I'm going to go through both of these verses um, piece by piece um, because there's so much in them that I want to make sure that we are um, understanding and really taking something from um, tonight's lesson. So, verse 15, it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It's important, friends, to allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts. What that means is um, forever abide, um, to be the governing force of our heart, to allow God's peace um, to really um, lead our life, guide our life. That's what God is calling us to, to allow the peace of God to rule and to reign in our hearts. Now, someone is saying, Pastor, well, how does the peace of God get in my heart? Well, God's peace comes through acceptance of his son, Jesus Christ. The only way to have real, authentic, true peace is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, peace does not come from having money. Peace does not come from having um, material things. Peace does not come from having a nice job or living in a nice home. Um, there are pe many people, many people that are mentally drained and exhausted, um, emotionally depressed, and they have all of the um, fancies of life. They have all of the nice things of life, yet they are still in a place of um, depression, 
confusion, stress. They have a lot of anxiety. And that is because the peace of God is not ruling and reigning in their hearts. It is possible to have peace with people and to have peace with the situations around you and not have the peace of God in your heart. Um, but I, I, I want you to understand that, um, yes, you may have peace with the situation. You could have peace with a particular group of people. You could have peace with a particular um, circumstance that has happened in your life. But the only peace that can never be tampered with, the only peace that can never be frustrated is the peace of God. And it's important for us to understand that. Um, because life has a way of messing with our peace, meaning peace in our home, right? Uh, if your marriage is on the rocks or if children are driving you nuts um, or if circumstances or situations are just trying for you at that time, there, there, there's, there's, there's home peace that can be frustrated. Um, if you're working at on your job and perhaps you're having um, a little there's some contention between you and a coworker or you and a boss, then the peace on your job could be frustrated. It could be uh, um, tampered with, you know, um, in church, if everything is not going exactly the way that it ought to plan, that church, that, that peace within the church among its members can be frustrated. But when you have the peace of God in your heart, and the peace of God is ruling and reigning in your heart, it cannot be tampered with. It cannot be frustrated. Why? Because that peace is not controlled by circumstance. That peace is not controlled by issue or, 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 or this or that. That peace is actually controlled and sustained and upholded by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. If you're watching me today, I want you to write in your notebook or put in the feed, circumstances do not frustrate the, pre the peace of God. Circumstances do not frustrate the peace of God, which is why the Apostle Paul teaches us to allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts, to allow the, uh, the, the, the peace of God and, 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 and the, the, the resolve of God to allow that to reign in our hearts because the peace of God, listen, friends, the peace of God can withstand any trial. The enemy can come and punch at peace, but peace can stand. The enemy can come and try to, to manipulate situations to frustrate the peace of God, but the peace of God can stand. And that is how believers, amen, no matter what we go through and no matter what we face and no matter what, how, how, how ugly life may be, that's how we're able to still smile. That's how we're able to still press on. That's how we're able to withstand the vicissitudes of life. It is because there is a peace beyond us that is ruling and reigning in our hearts. I, I used to wonder how could people literally be diagnosed with cancer or um, see a loved one die or um, be going through, you know, uh, tumultuous um, problems and they still smile. They still go to church. They still give of themselves. They're still serving people. I've seen people be diagnosed with deadly diseases and they're still going. They're still serving and, 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 and they're not stressed and they're not worried. That's because the peace of God is ruling and reigning in their heart. And I would encourage any believer that is where you want to be. You want to be at a place in life that no matter what happens, I'm not saying you won't cry. I'm not saying you won't ever hit a rough patch in the road where, you know, your mind is, is kind of clouded. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is you don't become overwhelmed by your circumstance because the peace of God is ruling and reigning in your heart. Again, if you're watching me today, I challenge you to put that in the feed or to write it in your notes. Circumstances do not frustrate the peace of God. Amen. Circumstances do not frustrate the peace of God. The peace of God can withstand any trial. How is that possible? Because the peace of God is supported and undergirded and it is 
it, it, it comes from Jesus alone. Listen to this. Jesus entered the world and extended grace and salvation to all. When Jesus came into the world, amen, he extended grace and salvation to all. Um, he wanted uh, everyone to uh, embrace him. And when you embraced him, he extended um, salvation to you. If you believed on the Lord, then he extended salvation to you. Well, one of the derivatives or one of the things or one of the states, and when I say states, I'm talking about conditions of life. One of the states that come along with grace and salvation is peace. When Jesus came into the world, he brought grace and salvation. The Bible says that he was full of mercy, um, full of grace and truth. Excuse me. He was full of grace and truth. But behind that grace and truth came the peace of God. Jesus not only brought grace and peace, I mean, grace and salvation. He also brought peace. And if you want peace in your life, you have to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. So John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And I'm going to look at verse number 27. John 14 and 27. This is Jesus talking. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Catch this next part now. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it, it is possible to be at peace in a situation, be at peace on your job, be at peace in your relationship, but still not be at peace in your heart. Amen. It, it is possible to have forgiven someone and still not be at peace in your heart. And so Jesus says, I want to give you my peace. I don't want to give you peace that you get on your job or peace that you get when you and, a, you and your, your spouse make up. He says, I want to give you a peace that only I can give. A peace that is not uh, that does not come from having things. He says, but I want to give you my peace. He says, and the peace that I give, it is not superficial. It is not conditioned. It is not built on conditions. You know, because sometimes our peace is built on, right? You have peace in your marriage, right? As long as you feel like your spouse is doing the right things. They're they're loving you. They're supporting you. They're being faithful to you. They're paying bills. They're, they're going on trips. As long as they're pouring into that relationship, you have peace there. But the moment you find out something is rocky, right? So that peace goes away. So Jesus says, I want to give you a peace that no matter what happens in your life, it cannot be tampered with. He says, this peace is not the peace that the world gives. He says, this is a peace that I will give you. And, 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 and what's really important to understand is that Jesus was speaking this message before he went to the cross or before he ascended into heaven after the resurrection. And so what he's telling them is physically you have peace now because I am with you. I am walking with you. I am I'm holding your hand for lack of better terms. And so Jesus says, but the time is going to come when I have to bid you farewell and we have to separate. I must go back to my father uh, because he sent me here to do a job and that job will be complete. So I have to go back. He says, but in my absence, I want to give you my peace. I want to give you a peace that will not be tampered with. I want to give you a peace that cannot be frustrated. And friends, that needs to be our prayer on the daily. Lord, give me your peace. That no matter what situation befalls me, no matter what circumstances presented before me, I can remain at peace no matter what. I am learning. I am learning that there are some things in life that, that are just targeted towards you. God allows them to happen. Um, and a lot of times when we frustrate ourselves and we stress ourselves out and we, well, our anxiety is up, um, a lot of times uh, when situations happen, those situations are not meant to break us. Those situations are meant to reveal to us where we really are with God and where we really are in our relationship with God. One of the things that, that I had to learn really early in life, um, or one of the things that I'm learning now, amen, is that my peace, um, when I was allowing things to stress me and overwhelm me, I wasn't allowing the peace of God to reign in my heart. And so God had to show me, John, if you're allowing these situations to get the best of you, then you're not um, living in 
with everything that I gave you. He says, I gave you my peace for a reason so that no matter what happened to you, you could be at what we call homeostasis in science class or in the medical field, right? When everything is regulated, when your body temperatures are good, when all your organs are working, you're at a state of homeostasis. You're, you're, at, a, you're at a leveled state. He says, but, but when you're allowing trouble and trial to get the best of you and to overwhelm you and to, and to mess up your spirit and, and to not make you think clearly and to make you snappy and to make you, you know, on edge all the time, the peace of God is not reigning in your life and reigning in your heart. Amen. Amen. And there was a situation, amen, with uh, one of my uh, previous jobs, previous schools that I was in. Um, and, and it was frustrating me. I mean, I mean, it really bad to the point my wife said, man, you got to do something and get out of there. She says, because you're snappy and don't even realize it. Um, but, but when God began to minister to me about it, it was more than just moving away, right? Cause if you run from one situation and don't learn anything, God has a way of putting you back in that situation. Um, and so what, what God had to show me was John it's it's just not about moving from one place or another. It's about you praying a different prayer. Lord, no matter what happens, let your peace, the peace of God reign in my heart so that no matter what happens to me, I'm not frustrated. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not, you know, perplexed because I'm allowing the peace of God to reign in my heart. Amen. I didn't mean to spend that much time on all that, but somebody needed to hear that tonight. Um, man can live at peace and in peace with God because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The only reason we have peace with God or the only reason we um, can walk in peace is because of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. Um, you don't walk in peace just because you um, go to church or you're a minister or you're, you're, you're doing this or that. No, the peace of God is a derivative um, of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, right? Um, remember what I said earlier, Jesus brought grace and salvation, but with grace and salvation came peace, right? If we look at Romans chapter number five, uh, verse number one, uh, Romans chapter five, verse number one, it says, therefore being justified by faith, the word justifi uh, justified is uh, another version of the word is justification. Justification is being made right with God um, and being made right with God or being the righteousness of God does not come because you dot every I and you cross every T. You are not right with God because you do this right and you do that right or you abstain from this and abstain from that you are right with god you are made righteous you are the righteousness of god you are justified you have been you have gone through the process of justification because of your belief in god nothing you can do can measure you up to god uh, or or to make you worthy of god's love and god's grace none, none, nothing you can do can put you in that state therefore we have to understand that to be right with God, we must believe in God. Amen. A lot of people are saying, well, I don't want to give my life to the Lord because I still need to work on this or I still need to work on that. I need to fix this in my life or I need to fix that in my life. And, and what they really don't understand is that's not going to make you right with God. What will make you right with God is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And, and what, I, what I'm learning is the more you believe in God, the more you believe in his word, the more that that word begins to take residence and perfection in your life. OK, so therefore, the Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we are made right with God by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God because of Jesus Christ. Those people or, or, or maybe those watching me tonight or someone that will watch this live afterwards. When you are running, trying to have peace with God through actions, 
I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm paying my tithes. I'm going to church. When you're trying to find peace with God through actions, you are going to come up short. Because the peace of God only is extended to those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Put this in the feed or put this in your notes tonight. If you want peace, you must have Jesus. That's, that's the only way that peace is extended to us. That's the only way that peace is given to us. If you find yourself frustrated all the time, perplexed all the time, overwhelmed all the time, wanting to cuss all the time, amen, wanting to give people a piece of your mind all the time, when, when you find yourself in that state of mind, you are not living in you are living beneath the means that God wants you to live in. God wants you to live at peace. I, I will never forget. I will never forget. I used to call Sister Charlotte and 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 vent all the time. If there was something bothering me, I I mean I called her and I let her ears have it. She always listened. You know, she never gave me a hard time, but she always listened. Always listened to me. Always listened to me. Um, but right here lately. She's been saying stuff to me that 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 she says, oh, my goodness, I wish that 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 I was at that place you are where now things don't bother you or that you allow it to happen. You see it unfold and you just walk through it and you just pray about it. she says she says, I am praying and asking God to give me or to put me at that place. And 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 I might get in trouble for sharing that little snippet of our conversation, but she'll be OK. Um, but. I mentioned that today because I wasn't always there. I wasn't always at that place where I allowed the peace of God to reign in my heart. I wasn't at that place always where I allowed the peace of God to really control my thoughts, control my, my emotions. A lot of people don't know that, that I was a pastor preaching to people. People were getting saved and people were doing things, but I was having anxiety attacks. My asthma was bothering me. Things were, were keeping me up at night. I wasn't sleeping well. I was tossing and turning. I was going to doctor's visits about chest pains and things because I was allowing circumstances and situations. And a lot of people don't know this because they see the glory of my life, God using me on Sunday. And that's what a lot of people see. But a lot of people didn't know that after Sunday, I'd have to sleep like three days. Because I was overwhelmed with everything that was coming at me. But now my prayer is different. My life, and I'm telling you, when you allow the peace of God to really, truly reign in your heart, you become a free, light-hearted person. I am so light now. Things don't bother me like they used to. People don't bother me like they used to. Situations, listen, being a pastor can be very difficult at times because you're dealing with different personalities. You're dealing with death. Um, this weekend was really rough for me um, to, 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 you know, be a new pastor at a church. And this is the first member that I've lost since I've been at Piney Grove. It was, it was really difficult to embrace that in my head and to wrap my mind around it, not to mention Last weekend, I buried a member at Mill Branch. And so th these past couple of weeks have, have been difficult to see people that you love hurting and to see people that you minister to hurting. That, that's a difficult place to be in. However, I've never, I've never stayed up all night. I didn't allow the funerals to get the best of me. Yes, I cried. I cried at both of them, you know. Um, I didn't allow that to consume my person because the peace of God is reigning in my heart now. And, and, and when things like that are presented to me, because honestly, honestly, the member at Mill Branch, I found out he was at hospice. I, I called Deacon Jackson. I called him. I said, hey, I just found out Brother Calvin is in hospice. And, you know, things are not looking good, but we're going to be in prayer. And and he and I were talking about a schedule or how we could get to the the hospital the next day. We were on the phone. The phone began. So I got a beep in the phone and I said, Deacon Jackson, hold on a second. The family's calling me. Within five minutes, I got a call that he was in the hospice. 
Five minutes later, he was deceased. And so that kind of thing, it really pierced my heart um, because I'm like, I'm just trying to make things work where I can get there and see him and pray with him and believe God for him. And God had another plan in five minutes. I could have immediately just screamed, become overwhelmed. Um, but I didn't. I allowed the peace of God to reign in my heart. Um, to see Yolanda, she's on tonight. She gave her testimony about um, being diagnosed with cancer the second time, right? Um, but at the time she was diagnosed, like the same week, my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. Um, and then a couple weeks later, we had another member at Millbridge who also was, they found cancer unexpectedly right then. And so all of that stuff as a pastor, um, being a pastor is not just about preaching uh, on Sunday and, and, and doing Bible study. Sometimes you carry the burdens of your people because your people are going through difficult times. And so as a pastor, you have to carry that. But then you also have to preach not only yourself through it, but you got to preach your people through it. Right. Um, and so there was a time in my ministry when I was just preaching about who Jesus was. But right here lately, I've been preaching about how to take the Bible and to make it through, to get through circumstances, to get through situations. Yesterday, I preached a message, be not troubled, because with everything around us, it's easy to allow that stuff to consume us. But um, I allowed the peace of God when all these cancer diagnoses was coming to me. My grandmother was really upset because my grandmother will be 80 um, in um, April. Um, and so she was really upset. She was like, you know, this has come back. Like, my daughter's gone. My husband's gone. My son-in-law's gone. Now I got cancer. She was really upset. And, and I just had to talk to her and say, Grandma, God is able. And God can do anything. And, and I prayed with her. She came to church. She came to the altar. I laid hands on her. I prayed with her and believed God. I prayed with Sister Yolanda. I prayed with, with, with Sister Alicia. And, and all of those people are now cancer-free. But we could have all, literally all of us could have been stressed out. All of us could have been worrying about it. All of us could have had our anxiety high. But what did we choose to do? We, choo we choose to allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts. And we were able to see the, 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 the gift of God, the healing of God. We were able to see all of that come to fruition because we allow God's peace to reign in our hearts. And, and all, I'm, all I'm teaching you tonight is to not succumb to what your eyes see, but to believe what your spirit tells you. If your spirit tells you that you can be healed, don't let the doctor tell you that it don't look good. You say, doctor, look, I know what you see on your test, but I got another, I got another possibility. I got another belief, and that is that God's peace is everything to me and that God's peace will reign in my heart. I'm out of time. So, so I want to give you this last thing, this last thing about the peace of God. Well, two things, two things. Um, in the time of trouble, we can remain at peace if we keep our minds on God. We can remain at peace if we keep our minds stayed on God. The longer you think about your problem, the worse it's going to become. Let that sink in. The longer you think about your problem, the worse it will become. As Christians, it is not our responsibility to think about the problem. Let God think about the problem. Let God work out the problem. I told the saints yesterday that the, the, the battle belongs to God, but the victory belongs to me. I don't have to think about what I'm going through and how ugly it is. I need to keep my mind on God. Keep my mind on his, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, right? I need to keep my mind on what God can do, who God is, what God said in his word. Because Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4 says, And he will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. Keep your mind on God, and he will keep you in peace. Rewind that, Pastor. Somebody missed their place to shout. Listen, keep your mind on God. 
He will keep you in peace. It's not your job to, 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 to push peace through your situation. It's not your job to find peace in the midst of your chaos. It's your job to keep your mind on God. Scripture says he will keep you in perfect peace. Your job is not to try to find peace or find a resolve or to work out the problem. You got to do what God's word says. Keep your mind on him and he will keep you in perfect peace. You, you, somebody need to put that in, in the feed today or write that in your notes. God keeps us in peace. Amen. Amen. You've been trying to find peace. You've been trying to work it out. You've been trying to figure it out. And that's what I used to do. I used to be a worry war. I used to try to figure this out or figure that out or to put my spin on this or to put my spin on that only to, to, to realize that that wasn't my job. My job is to keep my mind on him and he promised to keep me in perfect peace. Some That's somebody's word tonight. That's somebody, you just got the answer to that problem. Keep your mind on God and God will keep you in perfect peace. It's not your job to keep yourself in peace. Let God do that. Some of us are running into a brick wall because we're trying to do God's job. We're trying to be God in our situation. But God says, I don't need you to do my job. I don't need you to work it out. I don't need you to figure it out. I don't need you to try to fight this battle yourself. This battle is not yours. It belongs to me. That, 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 that issue with that person is not your battle. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God says, I want you to just think about who I am. Think about my, my ability. Think about my capacity. Think about my strength. Think about how awesome I am. Think about all that I've done for you previously and think about what I could do for you in the future. God says, think about me and I will extend my peace to you. He says, you don't have to find peace. I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to look for peace. God said, I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to discover it. God said, I'm going to give it to you. And that's what I want you to understand tonight. God says, I'm going to give you peace. Stop looking for it. Stop trying to manipulate situations. Stop trying to take matters into your own hands. God says, I'm going to give it to you. All I need you to do is keep your mind in the right place. Keep your head on straight. Give me glory when you, when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Uh, your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah, right? He says, he says, all I need you to do is think about me. Keep this brain on me. Don't, don't worry about the circumstance, the situation, the problem. He says, if you keep your mind on me, I will give you peace. God is going to give you peace, but you got to get out of it. You got to get out of his way. You got to take your hands off of it. You got to remove yourself from the situation. He says, keep your mind on me and I will give you perfect peace. Isn't that good news, y'all? That, that, that's so powerful to know that. And see, this is the thing about salvation. This is the thing, and I'm, I'm going to close. This is the thing about salvation that a lot of people don't know. God is not requiring you to do anything. A lot of people are, are trying to prove themselves. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do that. They're trying to make this work. They're trying to make that work. And God is sitting back like, I didn't ask you to do that. I didn't ask you to try to fix that. I didn't ask you to try to turn that around. Why are you doing that? Like That's not your job. I didn't ask you to do that. And so because God didn't ask you to do that, you're, you're getting in the way of him really extending true, genuine, authentic peace to you. If you get out of God's way, God can and God will give you peace. I'm, 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 I'm closing. But peace, my friends, is an attribute of the spirit. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit then ensures that we remain at peace at all times. I cannot tell you how important it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in an unknown tongue and having a nice dance and being able to run and stuff. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, right? God will keep you in peace. His spirit will, will keep you at peace. His spirit will remind you of peace. 
Amen. Say, uh-uh, don't, don't allow that to mess with you today. Stay in peace. Stay in peace. Somebody put that in the feed tonight. Stay in peace. Stay in peace. That's what God wants for us. He wants for us to be at peace. Amen. Amen. And when we allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts, then it's not hard, amen, to be at peace with all men. You see that? The Bible says, be at peace with all men and holiness without no man shall see the Lord. When we allow the peace of God to reign in our hearts and to rule in our hearts, we can be at peace with our neighbor because we're at peace within ourselves. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about peace where you just satisfied with being you. No, that's not the peace I'm talking about. I'm talking about being at peace in such a way that no matter what befalls you, no matter what comes to you, you'll be at peace. Friends, I'm all out of time. I pray this word was a blessing to you. We didn't get to do verse 16 today. I'm so very sorry. But next week, we're going to get to verse 16. We're going to talk about not only should peace, the peace of God rule in our hearts, but the word of God should dwell in us richly. That's what verse 16 says. Allow the word of God to dwell in you richly. We're going to talk about that next week. Father, thank you for your word. Allow your word to find in our hearts a lodging place. Father, keep us at peace, not only with our brother, but with you too. We are at peace because we accepted you and that peace is going to rule and reign in our heart. Help us, oh God, that when situations present themselves that are unfavorable or they're adverse, Father, we will remember that if we keep our mind on you, you will in return will give us peace. We love you today and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Amen. Good day and good night.